takes place in a very crucial moment, which is just after the G20 summit and before the summit of the Americas. The dates chosen for this uh, gathering uh, were done so well in advance and in coordination with the Organization of American States so that we would be on a back-to-back -back basis with the Summit of the Americas. This means that everything that uh, will be discussed here and the, our conclusions will be shared with the heads of state attending the Trinidad and Tobago Summit. In this sense, uh, a declaration has been drafted by a Global Agenda Council on the Future of Latin America, which is a group of experts related to the World Economic Forum. And uh, this declaration has been endorsed by our co-chairs. You are welcome to look into the kiosks, read it, and, and endorse it if you, if you wish to do so. In, in this context, there are two dimensions. Uh, we are focusing on, on this panel on, the, on how the crisis is affecting Latin America and wh what our responses will be. And the closing session will be about establishing the link to the uh, Summit of the Americas, which uh, we're trying to aim and understand and, and propose the fundamentals of a new development and a sustainable cycle. So please take, a, take, take some time and read the document, uh, which will be shared uh, with, with all the heads of state participating there. So, um, going to our panelists, it's my pleasure to introduce from uh, on my on my right hand side, uh, Mr. Pablo Antonio Scaff. He's the president uh, of the Federation of Industries uh, of the State of Sao Paulo, FIESP, which is the most important business association uh, organization in, in Brazil, representing more than 150,000 uh, sub industries. Uh, on the right-hand side is the president of the National Bank of Poland, Mr. Strzegby. He um, has a long track record in the financial sector and in different uh, academic institutions. To the, on the right-hand side uh, of Mr. Strzegby, uh, Mr. Moreira Sales, the chairman of Banco Itaú Unibanco, recently merged uh, institution and one of the 10 largest banks in the world uh, today in terms of market capitalization. And uh, to close this session, the president uh, of the central bank, uh, the governor of the central bank of Brazil, uh, Mr. Enrique Meireles, will join us to, to conclude this panel. Please welcome this distinguished group. Well, we, we are all watching with, with enormous interest what the, develop, the financial and economic developments in Latin America and how these are being affected by, by the US, by Japan, by the European Union. And um, the downturn is certainly hitting uh, the region, but it seems to be that uh, relative to other parts of the world, Latin America is being uh, affected in a different way than in the past. And this is what brings this distinguished panel uh, this afternoon in terms of understanding the financial, the real economy, and the international perspective uh, of, of the current global crisis. Uh, we will talk about a number of variables. And in this sense, I would, I would uh, first ask Mr. Moreira Sales to share with us some thoughts on how he sees uh, the financial institutions in Latin America, especially or in Brazil, uh, as this crisis started as a financial crisis in the developed world, and it seems to be that uh, we well, doesn't seem to be we did not uh, produce it in Latin America, but we rather imported uh, a share of this crisis. So, uh, Mr. Sales, how do you see this? Hello, hello. Can you hear? Yeah. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, I think to talk about the financial system now, uh, we have to go back a, a little bit and understand where we are coming from, particularly in Brazil. So there's a very short presentation here, five slides, which I would like to lead you through. Uh, starting uh, here in, uh, actually, can you move one forward, please? One forward? Yeah. No, you have to go back. I think it's uh, one, okay. Okay. 
Uh, if you go back to uh, Brazil back in 1994, uh, 35 years of very, very high inflation, and we had for the first time a very successful uh, economic plan which ended inflation. This was the real plan. Uh, with the economic stability, we also had, obviously, a fast process of consolidation of the financial system. Until then, banks were really living off inflation, of float, inflationary revenue, and this, there was a sudden stop in that, and there was a rapid drive for consolidation, which lasted about five or six years. At the end of the period, we had a very different financial system in Brazil one where uh, there had been a wide array of uh, privatizations. Uh, we had foreign banks coming in, and we had the local banks growing by acquisitions or uh, by mergers. Uh, and we had new businesses being developed. At the same time, because of the risk of a crisis, we had the Central Bank of Brazil really improving tremendously its oversight of the local financial system. And in that period, uh, we had really a complete change in the, super, in the supervision uh, of the central bank of the local financial system. Uh, nowadays, uh, the Banco Central do Brasil supervises 21 different types of financial institutions. This is a consolidated version, very different from what you have in the United States. Uh, there is no off-balance sheet exposures in Brazil. There is no special investment vehicles. Uh, uh, they are not allowed. And finally, regulators have complete access through clearings and registry system to all deals within uh, the financial system. Uh, so, when, if we can move to the uh, next slide. When the crisis hit, and basically it hit with the uh, Lehman Brothers uh, uh, collapse in September of last year, Brazil did suffer the consequences of that. And you can see in the graph that actually in the fourth quarter of last year we had a very serious uh, stop uh, in the economy. Our, our uh, year on year growth was actually minus 14% in terms of GDP, one of the highest uh, uh, declines uh, in the emerging market worlds. And we see that uh, this has affected tremendously trade, uh, and trade lines were probably the most affected financing uh, lines in Brazil. Uh, as you move forward, what kind of financial system uh, really had to weather this kind of crisis? Uh, actually, it is a system that is very well capitalized. As you can see on the top le left-hand corner, uh, Brazil has an average BIS ratio of 15.5%. This is way above what you see in Europe, what you see uh, in the US, what you see in Japan. At the same time, it is a system that uh, still has uh, high returns. Uh, you can see in the graph here, slightly below Colombia, slightly above Mexico but obviously far higher than what we see at this moment in the US and in Europe. Uh, there's very limited uh, exposure uh, to mortgage securities. There are no toxic, toxic assets, uh, so to speak. Uh, in Brazil, mortgage penetration is very low. This is obviously not a positive sign, but in this particular moment, uh, it is uh, something that really is helping the system. There is very low delinquency because there is very little exposure to that kind of market. And finally, uh, the system in Brazil is very uh, lowly leveraged. Uh, we see uh, each, uh, ratios of about five, six, seven times of total credit uh, portfolio to uh, net worth of the banks. So it's a well capitalized, low leveraged system. Uh, this has been actually reflected in terms of market capitalization, which is one of the questions that you are addressing. And you can see here also in the next chart that when you compare the drop in the value uh, of uh, the banks uh, in Europe, in the US, in Latin America, and in Brazil, uh, we see that in that order, we have been less affected uh, than what has happened uh, elsewhere. And finally, uh, in, the last, in the last chart, we see that there's still low credit uh, to GDP uh, in Latin America, although it has grown quite substantially in the last few years at a rate of 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent per year, uh, but still the penetration uh, is relatively low in the order of 40 percent. At the same time, this is a system, as, as I mentioned, that has a strong capital structure, that has low leverage, that has very little of the agent uh, principal uh, issues, uh, 
because the system, uh, the local banks uh, are usually locally controlled. Uh, so there's a, a, a very adequate supervision. So I would say that the crisis, although, I mean, it has hit worldwide, uh, finds in Latin America a local system that I think is well prepared uh, to really come back uh, into the market once uh, this process is, is over, which we imagine it will happen probably in uh, 12 to 18 months. Mr. Szepik, uh, you, you're the head of the, of the Central Bank of Poland, uh, an emerging market that is very linked to the European Union. In particular, your two main trading partners are France and uh, Germany, two large economies that are also linked to South American uh, exports and imports. Um, how do you see these two economies evolving uh, in, the, in, the curve, in, the, in the short and medium term? And uh, in terms of the, um, the efforts of the European Union to, uh, to work towards a, a more solid financial architecture, do you see this happening in the, in the medium term? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, yeah, let me start from, uh, uh, from saying that uh, uh, our region, uh, East Central European uh, region, um, uh, celebrate this year, uh, this year, 20th anniversary of uh, transformation. Transformation from, uh, from uh, political and economical. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, therefore, during this, this time, we observe a lot of changes. Our starting point uh, 20 years ago was different from other, uh, from other countries in emerging market. But we may see some similarities between uh, South American, uh, Asian, and, uh, and, and East Central European uh, countries. Let me start from uh, financial architecture. Uh, the problem from the beginning, it was lack of capital. Lack of capital, uh, therefore, in, uh, in our region, uh, in uh, financial banking sector, uh, we observe signifi significant uh, number of, of share of foreign capital. For example, in Poland, it is 70% of foreign capital in banking system, when in others, uh, East Central European countries, it's even, even close to 100. Uh, it was a great challenge uh, to, uh, to make some shortcut on the way to recover, uh, on the way uh, uh, to transform uh, to transform our financial system to a modern one. It was a source of capital, also a source of uh, know-how. Uh, now, it's, uh, it is both uh, posi uh, have some uh, positive and negative impact. Positive is that parents company uh, are still delivering liquidity to their subsidiaries. Uh, the negative impact is that they are dealing according to the sen sentiment from uh, from uh, their uh, countries, from home countries, uh, like Germany, France, uh, uh, US, and, and, and others. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore uh, um, uh, increase, um, uh, increase um, uh, significance of, of, of uh, proper uh, super, uh, supervision system. Uh, we in Poland, we, uh, we had good history with uh, uh, banking supervision. Uh, our uh, banking supervision since uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2000, 2008, during this, um, uh, uh, during this uh, good time for global economy, uh, dealt anti-cyclical. Uh, therefore, our problems, like my colleague said, uh, uh, are, below, uh, are, are not so, so uh, are, are, um, uh, we don't observe. Uh, we, we don't observe any uh, toxic assets uh, subprime in our financial system. When we observe uh, this crisis today, uh, the crisis of financial sector and on of, of real economy, at least we have uh, we have only one. But uh, the, the 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 problem of uh, the the crisis of of real economy. In this case, uh, Poland uh, differ from. Uh, uh, from uh, other part of region, we are not homogeneous one. Uh, 
Poland and Czech Republic uh, are on the better position than others. We still observe uh, in Poland uh, positive GDP growth, and according to our prospect this year, uh, this year we have chance to, 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 to keep uh, GDP growth on the level around 1%. Of course, there are some uh, downside risks, especially coming from uh, European uh, Union. And now I may, may move to the second part of your question, the situation of Germany, France, and other uh, European countries. Uh, they are uh, much more affected by, uh, by uh, crisis than, uh, than, than we are now because of strong dependence on export. Uh, and export now is the main driver to recession. Uh, now we observe uh, recession, uh, we expect that in uh, uh, West Europe uh, we will observe uh, uh, GDP growth on the level of mi around minus 3%. And uh, mostly because of, uh, of uh, lack of demand, lack of, uh, of uh, significant decrease of export. Uh, therefore, uh, this part of our economy that is dependent on export also suffer from this uh, from this problem. Uh, what is what is a what is a positive uh, in our uh, situation? It's still significant demand. Uh, our our consumption uh, our consumption uh, it's still on the on the stable. Uh, of course, slightly de 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 uh, declined, but it's still on the on the on the positive level, about around uh, 3 to 4 percent. And I think uh, this year it will be a main driver to keep, to keep, uh, to, 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 to keep positive uh, GDP growth uh, in our uh, country. Uh, like I said, a 20th anniversary of, of our uh, transformation, it is time of, lot of, of reforms, of changes, and, and it, is, it was a time uh, of, of uh, 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 when we when we uh, change our economy to most, uh, much more modern uh, modern uh, one, and, and I, I may say now that our uh, labor market it's uh, uh, it's uh, more flexible than uh, than uh, 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 labor market of some uh, European countries. That there are a lot of advantages that could help us. As it means Poland. Uh, to be in good starting point uh, to recovery when uh, when a world will uh, go back uh, to the path of uh, sustainable uh, uh, growth. Thank you. Path of uh, sustainable uh, uh, growth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, oh, Mr. Scott, uh, what is the vision of the Brazilian productive sector of, in terms of? Uh, First, how is it being affected? How is Brazil uh, industrial uh, sector being affected and the corporate sector? And what responses do you see shaping up uh, in the near future? Good afternoon. And thank you so much for this invitation, for the opportunity to speak. It is indeed a great pleasure. Brazil, quite uh, differently from other countries, which right from the start of 2008 were already feeling the effects of the crisis, Brazil was getting along quite well until September of last year, in the third quarter of 2008. We had a growth of 1.7 percent and a projection, growth projection of approximately 7 percent in 2008. But the crisis hit in October and it came in through the financial system, credit disappeared and we had a tremendous drop of the GDP in the last quarter of last year, the second largest drop in the world. We went from the third quarter with a 1.7 positive growth to the last quarter of the year, a drop of growth of 3.6 negative. In other words, a variation of 5.3, the second largest variation in the world as well. And this affected, well, not all productive sectors, but those which depended more on credit and those who depended on exports. Other sectors like 
drinks and food, beverages and food that did not depend on credit or exports managed to get by and even in the last quarter of last year. We started off this year, the first three months, we have not yet closed the GDP for the first quarter of 2009, but our forecasts are of a negative growth, negative GDP. We are expecting a growth of minus one, perhaps even one and a, minus one and a half percent for the first quarter of 2009. And should this be confirmed, then we will find it difficult throughout the year of 2009 to achieve positive growth or even zero growth, because we would have to grow all the following quarters in case we get minus 1.5 percent in the first quarter we would have to grow two percent positive for the next three quarters to have zero growth in Brazil in the last let's see ever since 94 in the last 15 years f only five quarters did we have a growth of about two percent and in these quarters where we achieved a growth this growth, the world was growing on average more than 4%. As the world this year, in 2009, will grow on average approximately minus 2, therefore it will not be very easy for us to have the necessary growth to recover the growth of the GDP throughout 2009. So what we expect is that, unfortunately, we will have a negative growth, negative GDP about minus 1, perhaps even minus 1.5, and, and coinciding with the same um, rate as the first quarter. And industrial production follows the same path. We had a, an abrupt drop, 20% in industrial production in the first quarter, and we started a recovery. As from January, we grew 2.2 as compared to December, 1.8 compared to January. But we must have a growth of March to December of 35% to have zero growth in industrial production. It is not possible to grow 35%. Therefore, we will have negative growth also in industrial production in the year of 2009. And all of this, this crisis started, as I said, with credit. And today, although we do have several problems, the main, the major problem is still credit. So a solution, because uh, differently from other parts of the world, as my colleague Pedro Moreira Salles has said, the financial system, the Brazilian banks, are organized. And the financial system is um, very sure of itself in Brazil. And the Brazilian central bank was very competent, and the governor, Enrique Meirelles, is here. They were extremely competent and, and correct in the measures that they took vis-a-vis -vis the financial system. A last step was taken so as to guarantee investments up to 20 million with a limit of 5 billions in each um, in financial institute for the investors. And this then was a step taken which lends, um, would make, the helps the banks uh, be sure of what they're doing. So I would say that the Brazilian financial system is okay. It's in order. What we now need is uh, steps, um, effective steps, similar steps for the productive sector because there is a lack of credit. Today, credit is 60 percent of demand because in spite of the drop in activities, there has been an increase of the demand for credit because large Brazilian companies, which would take money abroad, no longer take money abroad, and began to look for money um, in the domestic market. So demand has increased and supply has decreased. Therefore, there is a gap, and this harms the small companies, average size, medium-sized companies, which are the largest number of companies in the country, and there is need for several instruments and mechanisms for steps to be taken, guarantees to re-establish credit. We have learned that liquidity and credit are different things. You can have liquidity, and this does not mean that you have credit. In a certain way, this is happening in Brazil today. You might have liquidity, but no credit. It's no use you're having uh, money in the bank if it is not in the company's uh, cash. You have to irrigate the economy with resources. So uh, steps must be taken and regarding tools that will guarantee um, the credit, which could bring about and 
irrigate, so to speak, the productive sector, particularly for the smaller companies. Regarding foreign trade, our expectations for this year, last year we had a trade flow of $375 billion in Brazil between exports and imports, so we should have a drop of about 20 percent, both in imports and exports, a uh, trade flow of about $300 billion this year. Jobs from October till last month, there was a drop of 730 um, jobs or places in Brazil. And from what we are feeling from now on is that things will be a little bit more positive. In fact, entrepreneurs, businessmen's expectations are more optimistic for the next quarters. However, we are in the seventh month of crisis in Brazil. It started in October, we're in April. The last six months, the figures have been bad. GDP, industrial production, unemployment. So no matter how much recovery we have, in, uh, although we um, are expecting but more recovery for the next few um, quarters, we will not be able to recover uh, the GDP and employment and industrial production up to what it was. Therefore, we have a tremendous need for investments in infrastructure in Brazil. We have struggled so that this be stepped up so that we have more investments in infrastructure. We have a program in Brazil which is the growth acceleration program or for investments, for growth. And this program is uh, not as uh, fast as it should be, because that would help a lot, not only at this moment of crisis. It could foster employment and generate activity, but also in helping us to solve the problems of infrastructure in the country which uh, has been rather let go over the last few decades. Therefore, it would be our chance to get out. Um, this crisis now, none of us know how intense it will actually be. We know it's serious and we know it's important, but we not, do not know how long it's going to last and how intense it will be. But we could be sure that like all crises in the world, one day it'll go over. And when it does go over, it is very important for Brazil to have its infrastructure up to par. So it'll be very important to have um, investments at this moment in infrastructure generating energy, ports, uh, roads, um, railways. So there's tremendous opportunity in the infrastructure sector. And the basic question of credit, which I have mentioned before, we have to focus on this so that we have um, a comeback of credit, which is so important for the productive center in Brazil. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for this invitation and for the opportunity to speak. It is indeed a great pleasure. Brazil, quite uh, differently from other countries, which right from the start of 2008 were already feeling the effects of the crisis, Brazil was getting along quite well until September of last year, in the third quarter of 2008. We had a growth of 1.7 percent and a projection, growth projection of approximately 7 percent in 2008. But the crisis hit in October and it came in through the financial system, credit disappeared and we had a tremendous drop of the GDP in the last quarter of last year, the second largest drop in the world. We went from the third quarter with a 1.7 positive growth to the last quarter of the year, a drop of growth of 3.6 negative. In other words, a variation of 5.3, the second largest variation in the world as well. And this affected, well, not all productive sectors, but those which depended more on credit and those who depended on exports. Other sectors like drinks and food, beverages and food that did not depend on credit or exports managed to get by and even in the last quarter of last year. We started off this year, the first three months, we have not yet closed the GDP for the first quarter of 2009, but our forecasts are of a negative growth, negative GDP. We are expecting a growth of minus one, perhaps even one and a, minus one and a half percent for the first quarter of 2009. And should this be confirmed, then we will find it difficult throughout the year of 2009 to achieve positive growth or even zero growth. 
because we would have to grow all the following quarters in case we get minus 1.5 percent in the first quarter we would have to grow two percent positive for the next three quarters to have zero growth in Brazil in the last let's see ever since 94 in the last 15 years f only five quarters did we have a growth of about two percent and in these quarters where we achieved a growth this growth the world was growing on average more than four percent as the world this year in 2009 will grow on average approximately minus two therefore it will not be very easy for us to have the necessary growth to recover the growth of the GDP throughout 2009. So what we expect is that, unfortunately, we will have a negative growth, a negative GDP about minus one, perhaps even minus one and a half, and coinciding with the same um, rate as the first quarter. And industrial production follows the same path. We had a, an abrupt drop, 20% in industrial production in the first quarter and we started a recovery as from January we grew 2.2 as compared to December 1.8 compared to January but we must have a growth of March to December of 35 percent to have zero growth in industrial production it is not possible to grow 35 percent therefore we will have negative growth also in industrial production in the year of 2009 and all of this this crisis started, as I said, with credit, and today, although we do have several problems, the main, the major problem is still credit. So a solution, because uh, differently from other parts of the world, as my colleague Pedro Moreira Salles has said, the financial system, the Brazilian banks are organized, and the financial system is um, very sure of itself in Brazil, and the Brazilian Central Bank was very competent, and the governor, Enrique Meirelles, is here. They were extremely competent and, and correct in the measures that they took vis-à-vis -vis the financial system. A last step was taken so as to guarantee investments up to 20 million with a limit of 5 billions in each um, inst financial institute for the investors. And this then was a step taken which lends... Um, what makes helps the banks uh, be sure of what they're doing. So I would say that the Brazilian financial system is okay. It's in order. What we now need is uh, steps, um, effective steps, similar steps for the productive sector because there is a lack of credit today. Credit is sixty percent of demand because in spite of the drop in activities, there has been an increase of the demand for credit because large Brazilian companies, which would take money abroad, no longer take money abroad, and began to look for money um, in the domestic market. So demand has increased and supply has decreased. Therefore, there is a gap, and this harms the small companies, average size, medium-sized companies, which are the largest number of companies in the country, and there is need for several instruments and mechanisms for steps to be taken, guarantees to re-establish credit. We have learned that liquidity and credit are different things. You can have liquidity, and this does not mean that you have credit. In a certain way, this is happening in Brazil today. You might have liquidity, but no credit. It's no use you having uh, money in the bank if it is not in the company's uh, cash. You have to irrigate the economy with resources. So uh, steps must be taken and regarding tools that will guarantee um, the credit which could bring about and irrigate, so to speak, the productive sector, particularly for the smaller companies. Regarding foreign trade, our expectations for this year, last year we had a trade flow of $375 billion in Brazil between exports and imports, so we should have a drop of about 20%, both in imports and exports a uh, trade flow of about 300 billion this year. Jobs from October till last month, there was a drop of 730 um, jobs or places in Brazil. And from what we are feeling from now on is that things will be a little bit more positive. In fact, entrepreneurs, businessmen's expectations are more optimistic for the next quarters. However, we are in the seventh month of crisis in Brazil. It started in October, we're in April. The last six months, the figures have been bad. 
GDP, industrial production, unemployment. So no matter how much recovery we have, in, although we um, are expecting more recovery for the next few um, quarters, we will not be able to recover the GDP and employment and industrial production up to what it was. Therefore, we have a tremendous need for investments in infrastructure in Brazil. We have struggled so that this be stepped up so that we have more investments in infrastructure. We have a program in Brazil, which is the growth acceleration program or for investments, for growth. And this program is uh, not as uh, fast as it should be, because that would help a lot, not only at this moment of crisis. It could foster employment and generate activity, but also in helping us to solve the problems of infrastructure in the country, which uh, has been rather let go over the last few decades. Therefore, it would be our chance to get out. Um, this crisis now, none of us know how intense it will actually be. We know it's serious and we know it's important, but we not, do not know how long it's going to last and how intense it will be. But we can be sure that like all crises in the world, one day it'll go over. And when it does go over, it is very important for Brazil to have its infrastructure up to par. So it'll be very important to have um, investments at this moment in infrastructure generating energy, ports, uh, roads, um, railways. So there's tremendous opportunity in the infrastructure sector. And the basic question of credit, which I mentioned before, we have to focus on this so that we have um, a comeback of credit, which is so important for the productive center in Brazil. Thank you. Conclude our, our session with, um, with, with some remarks from the governor of the Central Bank of Brazil. I would like to ask a question to Mr. Moreira Sales and Mr. Skipping uh, regarding the um, the price of our currencies in the region. There has been some volatility, and uh, the U.S. will have a fiscal deficit in 2009 of about 10, 12 percent of GDP. The, Europe, the main European Union uh, countries will have deficits of 5, 6 percent of GDP. So these spending programs will have to be paid off somehow. And while the risks today are more shifted toward deflation, uh, Obviously, there's, there's some fear of, of big inflation coming uh, in one or two years. Or what, what, uh, either of you, what, what are your views on this? And uh, this would obviously have some impact on the Latin American currencies. Uh, well, I think there's a fear of inflation worldwide, but not in the short term. I think uh, there is a certain worrisome about uh, the amount of uh, spending that is happening uh, worldwide. And uh, uh, some people would say that means this may play out in two, three, four years' time uh, in terms of inflation sort of resolving the issue. Uh, and obviously this is uh, something that governments will have to, to worry about. And uh, there is a tendency maybe in the, in the medium run of interest rates to have to go up again in order to really uh, try to, through monetary policy, avoid uh, a backlash of what is happening now from the fiscal side. Uh, I think in Brazil, we, uh, I don't think there's a lot of worry with, again, inflation in, in the short term. Uh, I think we are coming from uh, an austere fiscal uh, monetary policy, which I think was, was positive for Brazil and allowed really Brazil to be able to meet uh, the uh, target that uh, was uh, proposed by the uh, Conselho Monetário Nacional to the, to the uh, central bank. Uh, I, we, we feel that this year we are going to be on target, uh, next year as well. Uh, and actually, we believe that there will be a reduction in uh, interest rates uh, in Brazil in the short term. Uh, as for the currency, uh, we have suffered a uh, strong devaluation. Uh, I think from, from bottom to peak, uh, around 50%. Uh, but this has uh, moved uh, back uh, in the past uh, two months. Uh, and uh, uh, we, don't, we, we believe there will be an appreciation now in the short term of, of our currency. Obviously, to project currency is one of the most difficult exercises anyone can do, uh, but I think the tendency 
seems to be in, in that direction. Thank you very much. Uh, let, me, let me make uh, some remarks. Uh, during the last 12 months, we observed different, uh, uh, different fairs. Uh, we uh, was far against uh, against uh, uh, inflation because of because of of significant increase uh, uh, of of uh, uh, soft commodity prices. Uh, at the same year, start uh, uh, start a huge fear against deflation, and now again we we are worried about inflation. Yes, it's something. Uh, it, it's something in this issue. Uh, I think uh, uh, U.S. Uh, because of U.S. Uh, European uh, some uh, developed European country and others who are using uh, uh, fiscal stimulus uh, and uh, increase their uh, uh, deficit, uh, and also because of uh, significant shrink, uh, 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 significant decrease in in GDP growth. Uh, we'll observe uh, increase of uh, of uh, deficit to uh, GDP ratio. Uh, it is very important for European countries because, uh, especially European Union, uh, from European Union, because of Maastricht criteria, uh, where uh, GDP, uh, where deficit to GDP ratio is uh, around three percent, and now almost all countries are above that uh, that ratio. Uh, it could uh, it could uh, affect that in in increase in uh, uh, in uh, tax uh, in uh, in fiscal policy, uh, and in this case uh, finally could uh, could affect it uh, in inflation. Uh, in case of of currency uh, uh, of uh, currency changes, uh, I may say ab about Poland. Uh, in our region, Poland is uh, one of the broadest, uh, deepest, and most liquid uh, FX market. Therefore, it's very easy to withdraw uh, money from uh, capital from uh, from our market. Therefore, when was a, a process of flow to quality, uh, we suffer. Uh, we are the ca country that uh, suffer a lot from that. Uh, now, uh, now we observe kind of stabilization of our uh, of our uh, of our currency. Uh, uh, recently, uh, recently, uh, Zloty, uh, Polish currency, Polish Zloty appreciate uh, uh, appreciate uh, uh, by uh, about 10 percent because of uh, because of uh, 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 positive uh, positive information from our market and uh, because of uh, because of uh, uh, some uh, some other issues like. Uh, uh, like uh, 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 like uh, uh, chance to to enter uh, uh, f uh, flexible uh, credit uh, uh, facility from IMF. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, uh, both situation, uh, both situation like uh, currency uh, 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 problem with. Uh, Volatility of currencies, like and also inflation, it will in the issue in the near future. Uh, it will in the issue so long, so long uh, uh, as we as we will find uh, find answer for the question when this crisis will finish. At the moment in Brazil. We don't have a con any concern with inflation. We have no risk of increased inflation. Our expectation of inflation, or infl well, inflation is well within control, in fact, below. And for 2009, it should be about 4%. What we are concerned with, our problem is not inflation as such. Our problem is unemployment and demand, lack of demand and lack of growth and of development, and we have also very high interest rate. Our basic rate is 11.5, an inflation projection of 4%, and the basic interest, we have spreads which are very high. Spreads, well, they've dropped in the last 30 days quite significantly, but they are from 10 to 30%, depending on the financial institution. So an average of 20%, the average spread. Therefore, 
so this means 30 or 40 percent a year for working capital in a company, and that's the average cost, and it's too high. So our problem today is not inflation. We do not um, think that there is any risk of inflation. Our problems and our concerns, and this must be our focus, otherwise we are going to waste energy on the wrong things, going the wrong way, which is not where the problem is to be found. Our concern is the development of country growth, um, unemployment, demand. In other words, we have a large domestic market, and this domestic market, even with the difficulties of other markets, which might have a reflection on our own. We have here 190 million Brazilians. We have a very important domestic market, and what we need is credit and um, reasonable rates. Selic today, the negative um, interest rates, to, well, the world generally has negative interest rates. The basic interest rates are negative. And here, with an inflation of 4, our Selic, our basic rate could be 7% and 3% of real interest. Here it is 11 to or higher than that, 11.25. So our concern today is not inflation, but there are other much more real concerns, and inflation is not a real concern at the moment, and I do not think it will be for quite a time. I ask the governor of the Central Bank of Brazil, uh, Enrique Meireles, to conclude this panel. Well, thank you, Emilio. Uh, I was told to speak in Portuguese, then I think that uh, I do that, particularly in the sense that most of the audience is uh, either Portuguese or Spanish-speaking. Uh, there is something only for those who are English-speaking that, uh, for some reason, uh, when I go to these meetings and I speak in Portuguese, some of my colleagues uh, who are Spanish-speaking don't understand, and for some reason we Brazilians understand everything that the Spanish-speaking people say. Uh, I don't know what to read from that, uh, but what I, I would like to say is that please then turn on your uh, machines uh, if you, uh, for some reason, don't speak or don't understand the Portuguese. Well, muito obrigado. Thank you very much. The Brazilian economy is uh, presently facing the impact of this crisis, and this was made very clear after the presentations made by our panel members. And it became especially clear with what was said by Paulo Scaff, who referred to a drop in industrial production as well as a drop in other uh, related sectors that render services to the industry. The service sector has not felt a great impact, despite what I have mentioned before. The uh, retail, uh, broader retail sector has begun to feel the effects of the crisis. And what is important to mention is that all of those that depend on, that do not depend on credit, seem to be having a much better performance. The supermarkets and hypermarkets have not felt the crisis up to present. And they are undergoing stable growth. Evidently, they have felt a minor impact, but this is the uh, panorama that we see at present. What I would like to do very briefly is to show you a very important figure that is important at the beginning of the crisis and when we end the crisis, because the situation in Brazil presently is quite different from what it was in previous crisis. In the previous crisis, uh, not only Brazil, uh, other countries tended to grow less, but what will be important is uh, the end of the crisis. Previously, the crisis was prolonged, and we uh, replaced the outside crisis with an internal crisis. And I would like to share with you some graphs that show why some analysts forecast that Brazil will grow above the ab average, especially this year. Uh, 
and uh, whether the growth is positive or negative, uh, we have very few analysts that are foreseeing that Brazil will not go somewhat higher than the average. This on the one hand. On the other hand, what is expected is that Brazil will have an economic recovery before the other countries. Now, which are the reasons, uh, the structural reasons that will enable us to end this crisis first? The accumulation of international reserves in the first place, the liquidity. Brazil began the crisis with $205 million in reserves and accrual in uh, exchange rate before the crisis, which has created a margin of liquidity, enabling us to preserve our liquidity not only in the futures market, but also in the exporting market at a point in time in which the market had a high exposure to the derivatives due to the appreciation of their real and an overhedging of this position. And uh, the uh, compliance of our goals for many years of our fiscal surplus and a uh, dropping public debt when compared to the GDP. Another piece of information that is very important is elimination of the exchange liabilities in the public sector. That was always a weakness for Brazil with a, and that was fed into by the external crisis that would lead to an increase in the public debt, would exacerbate public trust, would lead to a greater devaluation, once again uh, completing this very negative cycle. Nowadays, as a whole, Brazil has a positive position in terms of foreign currency. And this means that the expenditures of the public sector compared to the GDP has dropped from 60% in 2002 to 40% at the beginning of the crisis. And during the crisis, this figure has dropped to 37% due to the position of the Brazilian public sector in stable currency. Secondly, The macroeconomic stability of the last few years has enabled us to have a sustained growth of internal demand before the crisis. In the third quarter in 2008, we had an expansion of demand of 9.3% per year, while the GDP grew by 6.8%, which means that Brazil entered the crisis with a very strong domestic demand. And the main anchor for this growth and continues to be was the expansion of the real uh, salaries. We had a growth of 9.6% a year on salaries, once again, based on an increase of employment and based on an increase of the real average salary. And uh, because of stability and growth, it has been estimated that approximately 20 million Brazilians have entered the C-class, the middle class, and that approximately 40 million Brazilians have crossed the line of poverty. Therefore, Brazil has not only strengthened its social indicators, but also its capacity for the consumption of the population. Evidently, Brazil did suffer the impact of the collapse of the Lehman Brothers, and this impacted Brazil through three channels. First, there was an impact on credit, as mentioned previously, and since the Lehman episode, the offer of international credit has dropped considerably for Brazilian banks. Brazil was uh, rolling its credit uh, at 40%. This went down to 20% with a gradual recovery, but we are still very much below our historic levels, and even the larger companies were forced to face credit restrictions. The second channel was exports, once again affecting those sectors such as agribusiness, mining, steel, and aviation, those that exported the most. And these are the sectors that were impacted due to a cut in orders. Third, uh, 
pillar or channel affected was that of confidence. And this has affected global corporate decisions in hedge funds that were working with derivatives or the repatriation of capital. Once again, the decision was to destock, and this decision was particularly strong in December and led to a drop of GDP in December. That is to say, companies globally that decided to destock, and for the case of Brazil, uh, perhaps there was a bit of overshooting in this case. The Brazilian government and the central bank have worked intensely to be able to resolve this problem. As was mentioned, a hundred billion uh, reais of uh, mandatory uh, deposits have been released into the market. We have also released uh, funds for the development bank. We have offered rural credit and we have funded the uh, sale of automobiles. And the National Council has set up a deposit enabling the smaller and medium-sized banks to once again become competitive in the market. We hope that normally, uh, gradually, we will have uh, normalization in terms of credit. And the great challenge at present is to go back to a more normal situation in terms of credit and to offer a good supply of credit and better spreads, go back to the spreads that we had before the crisis. Besides the other steps, we hope that this will have an important role. And besides this, the central bank continues to offer credit lines in dollars to banks that will make loans to exporting companies or to any company that will presently request a loan in dollars. This is very important to avoid the crowding out. That is to say, companies that are not able to tap funds abroad and have begun to tap credit domestically. Once again, we need to await to see how efficient these two factors will be to continue on with the increase of credit. Furthermore, the public banks in Brazil play a very important role. They are responsible for 50% of the credit offered in Brazil. And therefore, these public banks play a significant role. And this is one of the uh, weapons that we are using to be able to uh, work with uh, banks that are well capitalized, that have good portfolios. All of this should enable us to increase credit. And as was mentioned, the Brazilian financial system is quite sound. We have banks in a very good position, and we believe that this will enable us to uh, go back to a more normal situation in terms of the credit offered in Brazil. To mention a very important aspect, the, uh, what will happen in the coming months is still very uncertain. The automobile industry that led the destocking process has now once again begun to increase its production. In December, they were producing 100,000 vehicles. This went up to 170,000 in January, 270,000 in March. But other parts of this production chain that follow this leadership are now going into that destocking process. We believe that in the second quarter we will finally be able to see which is the true situation uh, based on the indicators. If we uh, look at the fourth quarter, on one hand it was extremely negative, but as Brazil had a very high growth great. Brazil was the only country when we compared the last quarter of 2008 to 2007 where we had a growth of 4.3 despite the great drop that we had in the third quarter. And once again, the carryover is strongly negative if this, because this drop uh, concentrated in the month of December and we had a very strong carryover into the first quarter that will continue during the rest of the year.
the most recent indicators begin to show signs of recovery as in the automobile industry as mentioned before. The case of the automobiles, the uh, sale was 52% greater than in November. And it is important to mention that uh, between December and March, there was a growth of more than 100% in this sector. Uh, well, compared to November. The retail market seems to show a recovery, and what is expected is that this recovery will uh, become more concrete beginning in the second semester, which means to say that as of the second semester, we will have recovery, and this should give Brazil a strong thrust for the uh, year 2010. Uh, important data that I would like to mention. A great deal is said about the basic interest rate in Brazil. I tend to say that we all wish to have a lower interest rate. If we are exporters, we want to have a more expensive dollar. If we are importers, we want a depreciated dollar. We all wish to pay less taxes. But it is important to keep in mind that we have to maintain a balance. Uh, the uh, situation in Brazil is a gradual drop of real interest rates. We were at 22%. Uh, real interest rates at the uh, end of the 1990s, and presently we have had a great drop. And what we forecast would be to have a one-digit figure for taxes, which would be unheard of in Brazil. Once again, this is the result of economic stability. The weaknesses of Brazil in the past have uh, greatly been overcome, and we are once again prepared to resist and come out of the crisis strengthened. We have broken with that classic uh, standard of uh, reacting to uh, crises that come from abroad with strong recessions and inflation. For the first time in decades, a central bank has now had the possibility of working with an anti-cyclical monetary policy. In the past, in crises such as this one, Brazil was forced to greatly increase the interest rate to be able to face the uh, external vulnerability. In the past, with the first sign of turmoil, Brazil was forced to react in a pro-cyclical fashion. Therefore, the situation is still a situation of concern. We have a great deal to do. And when it comes to employment, I would like to simply refer to information that has been disseminated recently. For those who have not read this figure, I would like to mention it. After we lost several jobs, during the process in February, we had the creation of 9,000 new jobs, and in March, 34,818 new jobs in the economy, less than our historical average that we saw in the last five or six years, uh, quite uh, below this, but once again, pointing towards a very positive position. Thank you. Join me in welcoming and uh, I'm sorry, in thanking all the uh, panelists for, for this interesting discussion and let's continue on to the networking break. Thank you.